everyone. Today we're going to talk about estimating withdrawal time in colonoscopies. This work was done in Google Research and collaborators are listed below. I'm Liran and I'm going to present the, this work. So what is the colon and what is colonoscopy? The colon is the last part of the digestive system. And unfortunately, um, colon cancer is um, a real problem and it occurs in 4% of people over lifetime. And the good news is that it's easily treatable if detected on time. Colonoscopy is a procedure to both detect and treat colon cancer. Um, it is recommended that every person above 50 will take a colonoscopy procedure once every 10 years. So what is a colonoscopy procedure? The colonoscopy procedure has two phases. In the first phase, the insertion phase, the practitioner gets a scope, a camera, in the colon all the way to the beginning of the colon called the cecum. This is a very technically challenging part. Uh, getting, navigating through the colon is not easy. The scope hits the colon walls multiple times and the practitioner needs to clean and retract and try again over and over. The entire process can take up to 30 minutes to get to the cecum and sometimes this uh, phase fails. Once the cecum is reached, the magic begins. This is where the withdrawal phase starts and this is where the practitioners detect and dissect the polyps. In this phase, the movement is mostly backwards Unless a polyp is detected and then the practitioner stops to dissect the polyp or pictures are taken or sample is taken from the colon. Um, but for most procedures, the movement is linearly backward. What makes a good colonoscopy procedure is that if the practitioner has good coverage of the colon, and can with greater safety uh, tell if cancer is detected or not. Uh, the colonoscopy withdrawal time is one of the key quality indicators for a successful colonoscopy. If the withdrawal time is below six minutes, this is usually associated with lower chances to detect cancer. Technically, this is called lower adenoma polyp detection rate. Anything above six minutes is good enough and aligns with recommended practice. So both practitioners would like to know while doing the procedure if they're moving fast, too fast. And the department heads would like to have statistics of procedures done in their departments. So detecting the withdrawal time is a very important task. Practitioners don't always agree on uh, when the withdrawal phase actually began. So some practitioners are very careful and only mark the beginning of the withdrawal where, where the cecum is uh, very clearly visible, entirely clean, and uh, some practitioners, once they recognize the general area of the cecum, they mark it as the beginning of the withdrawal. So there is some uh, disagreement between practitioners what makes the withdrawal starts. Um, the disagreement, the mean disagreement is uh, 1.17 minutes which is quite a lot. For the median procedure, it's 0 0.62 minutes. 
Um, the algorithm described in this work disagrees with the uh, a practitioner, one practitioner, um, uh, one practitioner uh, marking of the withdrawal uh, by the mean of 1.2 minutes or at the median 0 0.58 minutes. So now we're going to dive into the technical details on how the algorithm generates this estimate. The input for the algorithm are just RGB video frames. Each frame is processed one by one and the algorithm outputs uh, a number when the withdrawal phase actually began, how many frames ago. Um, everything described here is online in the sense that once a frame is processed, it's being discarded. Uh, the computation is not, does not take the entire movie, but rather one frame at a time. And the, uh, no, no need to look at the future, no need to dwell into the past. Uh, everything is adjusted per frame. So the pipeline goes as follows. The frames goes into a representation extraction. Then this is a very noisy feature uh, uh, layer. We do feature filtering or feature smoothing and after we have the robust features, we run a per frame classifier, which uh, classifies if a frame is in the withdrawal phase or in the insertion phase. And then the per frame probabilities are injected into a change point detection algorithm. And then the algorithm outputs a single point uh, in time in which we estimate the withdrawal time actually begun. Um, so for every frame, we generate the probability of being in insertion phase and a complementary uh, probability of being in withdrawal phase. From the list, from the complete uh, list of probabilities, we generate a maximum likelihood and get the withdrawal st uh, start time. To be uh, more uh, explicit, let's look at a specific example. Here we have a pell frame classifier. Is this a forward stage? So the label one would be if the frame is in the forward stage. Uh, in the x-axis, we have the time in minutes. In the y-axis, we have the estimated probability for a given frame. And the blue curve is the predicted probability of being in the forward stage over time. We have two very important time points, the green time point. This is where the cecum is first uh, reached. And a red time point in which the cecum is less reached. Um, we also have an horizontal line to mark ambiguity. If the algorithm marks the predicted probability 0 0.5, it means uh, the algorithm can't tell if this is forward or backward. Um, so we can see the beginning of the procedure uh, the algorithm predicts the frames to be in the forward stage. Something happens around the second first time and the probability starts to be ambiguous and something again happens uh, midway between second first and second last and the probability of being in first gets lower and lower and uh, basically almost zero after uh, the last frame of the seeker. And this is, again, everything here is per frame. Here we look at the aggregated log likelihood of uh, the likelihood of the change point, changing from forward to backward is a time t. So we can see the likelihood increase, although 
all the way until we get uh, a few frames before the first tickum and then uh, this is uh, kind of a long time interval of almost equal uh, likelihood and then it drops uh, substantially so the log likelihood estimator is roughly here let's dive into how um, this uh, which uh, features are really important so uh, from two consecutive LGB frames we uh, generate through a post network and a depth network we generate depth map for the image and a uh, ego motion estimate so from here we know if a frame moves forward or backwards um, additionally there's key landmarks we detect the leocycle valve the appendice appendicecal orifice and triradiate fold all listed here and this means the colon is not a uniform uh, pipe there's landmarks that the ordinary object detection pipeline can detect and this is added to the uh, pipeline um, the raw features are very noisy so we do some smoothing uh, exponential moving average to get robust features and um, then we integrate the robust features into uh, the per frame classifier. Thank you very much for your time.